name is Cal Molone from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And on the 19th of November, we're here to spread the message of freedom at the Compass at VCU. And this actually is going to be the number 50, 50th um, video of spreading anarchy. And so with that, we're going to be looking forward to, to the next milestone to making 100 of these videos. And I'll see you next year, you know, 200, 300, until we're finally free, until this message is out there in our, in our community here of Richmond, until Richmond is finally free from the state. And we have uh, Derek. Uh, I am the unofficial president of VCU Anarchy. If I ever get around to filling out the paperwork, we may become an official <laughs> club at some point in the future. We're going to be putting together some work into creating uh, the first anarcho-capitalist club here at VCU. Um, you know, and, and in time for appropriation of the school too. You know, the colors are not that different. Gold and uh, black. So, um, and again, to help uh, pushing this culture of uh, free market ideas out there as well. So, with that. Uh, hope you guys uh, take good care. We'll see you guys at the victory party. So that's this, that's the hidden violence uh, behind government. That this organization, this matrix, only knows how to solve problems the one way. Incarceration. It's incarceration, right? The, the use and threat of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions. So you and I, my friend Tyler here, already shared this. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, I, mean, I can definitely see it. I think that one of the main problems. How to phrase this? I participate in a lot of um, online chat groups and one of the big things I notice is that ideas are the big way in order to spread change, except a lot of times spreading those ideas gets you in trouble or you get labeled as an extremist, a socialist, or communist, you know, yeah. depending on wherever you are. But, um, I mean, take feminism for example, a lot of people take it as a way to say that, you know, oh, you're just, you know, that's such an old idea, you're saying that, um, I'm losing my train of thought now. Oh, you're, you're saying like the, the public perception of like well, how they view ideas, for example, and they view like that's very extreme, for example, yeah. uh, like they will say, well, that's too radical. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so, and so you, you seem to hold the same principle to anyone who, of course, they'll say, well, you disagree with the government, mm -hmm. and that's so far that you think it's, uh, they take it that it's an extreme position to hold, right? Yeah. Um, so, like, the position, like, I would hold is that you don't need a government to begin with, right? And people will take that as an extreme, right? Yeah. Um, but then you look, you step back and see what government is objectively. Government has a monopoly on the services I want, right? Mm -hmm. They have a monopoly on law. You have a monopoly on security, on roads, on judges, on currency. On food. On food, yeah. <laughs> but Monsanto, yeah. Um, first class mail here in the tax farm in Virginia, they have a monopoly on alcohol, ABC mm -hmm. stores. And you don't have the freedom, as I guess and you would in WoW, where you can set up your own store, you can trade, you can barter, yeah. you, can, you can compete. You don't have the freedom to cancel or unsubscribe as you would any mm -hmm. service, right? Like uh, to cancel and subscribe from Netflix or from my insurance provider or even from Wild yeah. if it was a bad server, right? Well, I mean, you look at you know the healthcare right now, for instance, it's just gone completely out of control because you have to subscribe now right. to their form. Which I do enjoy the fact that you know they are trying to make it so everyone can have healthcare. But I also think that by taking it completely under control, it's monopolizing it in a way. He says it's going to be business, but that's not really a business if the government controls it. Right. <laughs> exactly. So. Thank you. Yeah. Is it is a real business if WoW was threatening you to subscribe to their servers? He's like, yeah. look, we, we don't have to play it, but, but you need to subscribe, right? Yeah. It's like, and if you don't subscribe, we're gonna fine you, like maybe a couple hundred dollars in the first year. It'll only go up in increment amounts. Yeah. Um, or we're gonna delete your character. Yeah. <laughs> but then even WoW has a better server for like well, how many pe millions of people? I would say, right? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Really Ridiculous. But it's even harder on the first day for Obama to get his own website working. Right? So that's government inefficiency at its best. Um, well, okay, yeah, you hit, you hit a good point with that. Uh, so, yeah. Oh yeah, well I've been watching, um, well, trying to watch the news and it just gets really frustrating. Um, after going through college, you actually start to realize just how much BS they've been throwing at you in the news. You start to see all their logical fallacies and you'll just be sitting there and you'll be like, that's not what they're saying. Yeah. And, um, and they lie right in your yeah. face. So, you know, even CNN, I've been trying to watch that one because I've heard that's one of the less biased. I, le yeah, that's why I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. those, like, left-leaning. Better than Fox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well, well, there you go. Because um, I don't get BBC anymore, unfortunately. So. 
I think it's just still too early to really tell on a lot of these things. But yeah. I, I don't think it's so much as too early. See, there's um, like there even he fully lied to everyone yeah. about saying that you'll you be able to it. you can keep it. No, he, of course he has to lie because yeah. he knows that people were not supported if mm -hmm. if the truth was presented to them, right? Yeah. Um. So they you, you have him lying. Uh, you have him. Well, um, and then you also look at um, not just him, but lots of politicians. I feel like all it is is one big game to them. It's not even looking after people anymore. Um, they did a study, for instance, on Wall Street, how there are a ridiculous number of them are actually sociopaths, meaning they have actually no yeah. empathy whatsoever, and yet they're essentially running the economy right there. Exactly. And you know, what does that say though about big business, government, and all that when? They have no feeling for people under them. They're willing to step on them, and then they're willing to be like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to." Yeah, it's nothing about parts. They have no empathy. Yeah. They can't relate. They don't have that. And it makes you wonder how many government officials have the same, you know, thing. Exactly. It's actually institutionalized. So, like, if they were training someone, they would show you exactly where to step on that person yeah. and grind your heel, because that is that is government. That's corporatism. Uh, mm -hmm. That is the state. Um, just imagine a boot on the top of the face of humanity. So yeah, let's, let's get that boot off. There's a science that came out. Um, some some science, scientific report came out a while ago, trying to compare like addictions to like cocaine and stuff like that. Yeah. And they rated it to. Uh, you mean the Toronto mayor? Oh. Oh yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, right? <laughs> I was like I was, I'll tear out his eyeballs. Oh, I was like, God. oh. That's <laughs> and that's what they all are in secret. Mm -hmm. um, political power is an addiction to a lot of these yeah. people. Um, and like, if you're a sociopath. Uh, that's that's where you want to be. Yeah. Right. You can control the people's life. You can put a thread at gunpoint. You know, if you don't pay the service, well, like if you don't pay your taxes, we'll throw you into a cage. If you don't sign up for Medicare and you don't pay that, you know, several hundred dollar fine, well, we'll throw you into a cage again. Which that also works into another study I was reading about um, with how bullying works. Even you see it in children. Um, you have two different types of bullies. You have the one that sits back and organizes it all, sort mm -hmm. of the ringleader, but then you have the ones that they push into doing the major bullying. <laughs> and I feel like that's almost the government officials sometimes is the ones that kind of sit back and then they let others yeah. do the fall for them. Wipe like. your hands clean. Yeah, oh, that wasn't me. I I didn't hear about it, no. Right. So, and I, I think it's sad that the world, I mean, it's always been like this. You look at um, French monarchy, for instance, um, just all the turmoil that went on with that um, in history and you know it just kind of makes you wonder we think that we're so advanced yeah. as humans and then yet we're not yeah we're not really that far um, we're, we're still political slaves here we're yeah. still tax slaves just found a different ways to control us and every uh, achievement we think we're closer to freedom again government uses that same technology tool and uses it against us um, SIPA, POPA, every other three letter four acronym word to control the internet for example what's it now the uh, TTP? Oh, they have TTP? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a hydra if you think you're done with this one it'll come back with three come. more yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, I think even a hydro is easier to kill. Yeah. Well, I guess you go for the center. Well, I guess the center would be... Um, you burn it. You burn it. I mm -hmm. guess... Uh, if you look at mythology anyway. Is that how they did it? Yeah. Is it Hercules? Um, I believe so. Right. Calderize the stems. Yeah. Uh, and that's... I guess the cauterizing of the stems, I guess for me, I would view that as uh, uh, trying to cauterize the, uh, the language that the state uses to... Then that's, that's pretty much how they mm -hmm. control people, through the language, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's wrong for you to steal, we'll call it taxes wrong for you to murder it, we'll call it organized war. The guy in Boston, they called it, who blew up the, the, the running race, they call that a terrorist attack, but overseas when they drone bomb children, they'll call that a collateral damage. Uh, collateral, yeah, yeah, collateral damage. Um, so disguise the things from the reality of what they are objectively. Uh, like the war on drugs, it's a war on people, right? But of course, if they called it a war on people objectively for what it is, everyone would be against it. Yeah. So their propaganda machine is pretty strong in, in using language to kind of... Yeah. You think of propaganda, you think of World War One, World War Two. You right. don't actually think of today anymore because you don't see those giant, you know, posters of... Yeah. <laughs> and that, done a, they're a lot more sly about it nowadays because they realize that people do have the education now to start to see through. Right. Uh, They've done a really, really good job hiding the violence. Um, they're perfecting that propaganda machine. Um, like you look in the 60s when there was a lot of violence and you see all these dead bodies coming from overseas and people saw that visually, people reacted. That was the first time. Yeah, and then now, then they learn from their mistake. It's like, well, let's not have that become visible. Let's hide that violence. 
so that people don't react as negatively towards the government. So you don't see the same thing from Iraq or Afghanistan. Well, depending on the news station. You yeah, watch. depending. BBC, actually, that was one of the reasons I really enjoyed watching them was because, yeah, it was hard to watch, but you actually knew what was going on there. Right. Or Al here, I believe, is a good station. A good, uh, news Which source. one? Al yeah, that's online. Uh, yeah, online yeah. stations. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch, but like you start diving into um, alternative media. BBC is actually yeah. um, state media as well, but their whole idea when starting it was to like educate the lower classes. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole point of having BBC was I just, uh, education. I enjoy BBC mostly because they do have an outside perspective. They're not directly inside the United States viewing right. everything. Yeah. And I feel like that's a better way of looking at things. Yeah. It's very yeah. just sort of, okay, you know. Different lens. A th yeah. Or a third party. Yeah. Well, a lot of it too has to do with, um, you heard much about like the uh, war on journalism, how a lot of people are being hit, like, the whistleblowers, and mm -hmm. uh, like you can't indict British journalists for uncovering the US. Yeah, in the United States, I mean, you look at um, Snowden, for instance, now, he's considered an enemy. Right. And it's not just Snowden, yeah. it's um, Greenwald as well, who broke the story and gave him the access to get his message out. It's funny because uh, Obama promised there'd be transparency. Um, a lot of, you know, they also it's complete transparency for them. Like they, have, yeah, they know everything. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. Well, I promise transparency for us. Yeah. For us to see what's going on in your emails, on your phone. Um, do you know much about the prison program? Um, how do you mean? Like that's what he broke yeah. was the prison program, the, the way in which they're data mining up in Utah. I was like, but um, what's your major? English, actually. Likewise. Um, so a lot of medieval what? literature. So that's why I'm ah. trying to get more into what's happening now. You know, less Beowulf, more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Current. But. You have to take both time periods. So. Yeah, I never really enjoyed 18th century. I'm the complete opposite. Well, I'm just going uh, modernist and then just American. Yeah, I was straight. doing um, medieval and creative is sort of my focus. Okay. Well, so that's, yeah, that's awesome. And, and so that's the matrix of government? Yeah. Uh, the illusion of language. Oh, I don't like matrix. <laughs> that but that's scary. what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Um, it's like the, the burning of that language to, to see for what it is. is to kind of, you have to universalize these principles. Like the first three questions, that you don't use violence to solve your promise or advocate or initiate it. Yeah. Uh, you have to universalize that all over the world. right? Um, so it doesn't matter who you call yourself, what title you hold, what color costume you yeah. wear. It's wrong and immoral for anyone to initiate that violence. Which is pretty much the premise of what government does. Yeah. And that's how they fund themselves and sustain themselves. Um, so that's this, and then and then you, you you see what the matrix and what or what it really is. Then yeah. and so what we're advocating here pretty much is to turn to our community and let's start turning away from government. Uh, let's turn to uh, voluntary uh, solutions that we use in our day-to-day -day life. I don't use violence to solve my problems, so let's start off with that basic foundation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but even in while it's consensual, right? We all know we're going to go to P yeah. versus P battle. Uh, there's rules like boxing has rules too. Yeah. Nothing below the waist. No ear biting, Mike Tyson, and then we can box. Mm -hmm. But with government, they make up all the rules. Or they can just shove it under a carpet if need be. Exactly. Yeah, like healthcare again, right? How many of them are exempt from their own <laughs> own role? Yeah. This is such a necessary thing. Everyone needs it, except for me and my family and members of Congress and their pay staff members and, uh, and every other people who are more exceptional than you are. Yeah. Um, they are exempt from that role. And that's and that's really it. Uh, we're trying to create a free and voluntary society away from this state, uh, where anyone can compete against those monopolized services and say, you know what, I can provide you a better product that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer, right? So do you believe in a government, but it's very limited, just sort uh, of to keep organization? Well, you going? can have organizations without government. Um, you so, can have. So he becoming that's a minarchist position or a libertarian position where you keep a government as small as it can, basically to preserve private property and national yeah. defense, right? Mm -hmm. um, but not Cal believes that you could have multiple communities living in the same geographic region that all look out for each other, just having different preferences in which they live. Um, so it wouldn't be like um, Mad Max where all these little tribes raid each other. And yeah, because that's what I would think is. Um, well, you're reading a lot of medieval literature. Yeah, I could see it. I was worried it. to go back yeah, to um, the Greek societies, how everyone was like, the city hey, states, Sparta, yeah. you know, what you doing over yeah. there? I want that land. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, sort of. and that was even the argument for Beowulf. Is if, if he wasn't a, if he wasn't a hero, the uh, Geats would have been raided. And as soon as he died, the Geats get raided yeah. because so, he didn't leave a strong predecessor in place. Right. Um, but so, so government has no incentive for predecessors.
rulers. So like when you rotate political rulers, you're not like leaving it off to your child or yeah. to your family. So you pretty much try to steal as much wealth as you can in mm -hmm. those four years and disappear out, right? Yeah. Um, because you rotate political rulers in. So monarchies had an interesting different incentive and they're passing it down to their heirs. They have more, I guess, natural tendency to want to take care of the country. Uh, Even, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. This is mostly a, a generalized thing in, in the way that they were perceived and better versus uh, like socialism. But it's still all immoral because it's all still funded on the premise of still initiating force. Uh, so in a free and voluntary society, you'd have like thousands of communities that catering to your preferences. Like this is like you look at the actual rules. It's like I like the rules. Consequences not that bad. Great. This is a great lifestyle for me. Like golf course, golf course communities already exist. Yeah. Uh, 55 and older communities in Florida already exist. Uh, you can have your 420 friendly community. You can have one that's not. I won't force you to do that, which you don't want to. But how do you keep out? Um for, for lack of a better word, invaders, you invaders? know, other countries that right, would right, try right. to take advantage of the situation. So you can still have security, you can mm -hmm. still have defense, but these are will be voluntary. You can, like, I have, like you looked at my past history, I have 10 years of never harming my consumers, never drone bombing children overseas, mm -hmm. uh, great rating system, five out of five stars. Uh, but then you can have someone that says, well, we have 15 years and we give you a discount and you go with us. So that's pretty much how it would go about. Um, look at our track record. The police don't really have a good track record. Not lately. Not lately. It's like, even, yeah. even if one of the person, even if they, like after the person gets like a lot of um, complaints after 15 times and maybe they fire them, so what? I want that business to go bankrupt. I want that, I want the freedom uh, outside that monopoly and security for me to say I can provide a better form of security that's not going to throw people into cages for victimless crimes, right? Uh, where will you have voluntary consent? Or if I'm not like like Netflix trying to raise their prices overnight, people are like fuck that, you can't yeah. unsubscribe. I'm going, I'm streamlining on Hulu now, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's what you would have. All the bad businesses would go away. Uh, the monopolized services the government has will go away. Uh, for anyone who tried to you know copy their model, yeah. so you're not going to succeed. <laughs> um, and that's what you end up having. There's a lot of different forms of security, a lot of different forms of defense. Um, when do you have to worry though about those particular those different forms of security? Essentially, uh, uh, eventually, rather trying to buy for power. Oh, okay. All right. So you can look at uh. All right. So because now you don't have just one form of security business, you have thousands. Yeah. So they're all kind of checking on each other because they, they want to say. They're screwing you over. Look yeah. at that. Look, we have the proof. They added one extra bullet into their arsenal. I don't know what they're thinking, but I think you should unsubscribe and go with us. You know what? We'll pay your cancellation fee for them. All right? And so they, they will keep each other in check and ask them as like they already yeah, do. I like, just worry that it would go into chaos. Well, look, uh, all right, so you should look at it where it is right now, where, you, where it is government control, where you have over a million people in cages more than any other government in the world, the United States has. Over 75% of them are for victimless crimes. Right, that's what happens when government has a monopoly on security. Wouldn't it be better than to just fix the punishment, I guess? People have been trying to for, for decades. Um, a reform is another way of saying like the last 99 attempts didn't work. You can't reform um, the mafia. Right? You can't reform an institution that's founded on violence. You can't try to infiltrate and sneak inside and then you can change it and turn it against itself when it's founded on violence to begin with. It's like uh, trying to infiltrate the KKK that's founded on racism yeah. and I'm going to turn them against it. Um, it, it can't, because the basic premise on the gov government monopoly on security and justice, you still have to pay this out, this force, like a judge. I'm going to hold you a contempt of court because I don't like what you're wearing. Right, but I'm paying your salary. You're my servant, right? You think. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, and a private uh, justice will never happen that way. But these will be rules you consent to, right? Um, it'll be competing in, in the fact that, uh, well, I guess there's a lot of, or so you see like maybe violence could, could be a problem. So you want to look at the source of what, what creates a lot of this violence. So a lot of the stuff we advocate for is not just ending state violence, it's also ending a lot of the violence that's on the children, right? Spanking children, for example, teaches them that violence is a way to solve problems in this world. So of course they grew up with a lot of these um, tendencies to, for criminality, for addictions, for uh, a lot of negative associations. I don't know. My, my um, mom raised us on a, I guess, older standard and um, my siblings, that's how you got them to behave. You spanked them once, they knew it was bad. And right. after that, you only had to count to three, they wouldn't do it again. So under threat of being hurt, what kind of uh, stuff? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not judging parents. <laughs> yeah. My mother hit me too. But then I asked my mother, what was her childhood like? It was very rough. And then, uh, but then we came to understanding that was the handbook that was given to her on mm -hmm. how to rear children. So I didn't really question it or try to teach me negotiation skills mm -hmm. or trying to understand why I'm doing this. I'm trying to discover the world and trying to un understand what's going on around me. And threatening me is not going to help me understand. Um, 
but a lot of the scientists out there, this like the brain is still developing until the age of four. So this mm -hmm. has to be a traumatic experience on the child. Verbal, physical, uh, neglect, uh, sexual, any number of different ways that could be a traumatic experience for that child, for the brain not to be fully connected. Mm -hmm. And that leads to a number of different kinds of traumatic abuses, leads to a tendency to criminality. Um, and the fact that like over 90% of American families hit their child even before the age of four, even sometimes a few, couple months old, leads to a lot of these inclinations to the violence. Um, so the science is out there and, and, and the propensity and how it leads to criminality, addiction, suicide, um, a lot of mental issues. Uh, we actually actually passed out pamphlets on, on all of this. So. Oh, fancy. <laughs> Um, but that's so, so like we would want, want to look at the cause, right, and help change uh, the practices that goes on in leading to violent behavior. So in a free and voluntary society, a lot of this stuff will kind of be diminished, right? We, we encourage people to negotiate with their child. I mean, it's not a, it's a human being, it's not an animal. Even, even people who breed prize-winning pets, they don't hit them at all, right? I don't know, I'm just trying to imagine negotiating with my 10-year-old um, brother and that's a dead end right there. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, Sometimes, uh, if you're doing been doing it for a while, it becomes difficult. Um, yeah, it could be. He's but a bit thick-headed. <laughs> yeah. But that's and that's where we have to explore because again, they're they're still trying to understand. So, like, um, we just have to find creative ways to help them understand, right? That it doesn't go and reach beyond having to hit another person. Like, if um, if you hit a child because they don't understand, would it be okay to hit an old person because they don't understand, right? It's like, what did I tell you, Grandpa? Eat this applesauce. <laughs> That's serious stuff right there. He's got to eat his applesauce. Right? <laughs> but so we, again, you have to universalize it. But all the science is out there. The children who have not been spanked um, been, are the most disciplined, well educated in, in terms of understanding um, concepts. Um, but I'm not saying that, uh, I'm not trying to judge yeah, no. or anything like that. Um, and so that's, and that's kind of where we have to help break the cycle of this violence, right? And then we eventually will find that security won't be much of a problem, right? And again, when we're all adults, it's not really so much a problem with our friends. You know, yeah. we have voluntary consensual agreements. Um, we have uh, options on our choice. Everything's voluntary, it's not coercive. But with the relationship we have with government, it's coercive, right? So that's... Uh, that kind of ties into, I guess, the relationship to children. Like, for example, if I were to hit a child uh, because he did something I didn't like, and the child will ask me why, because I said so. Right? Because I'm your mother, your father. Because, because. So trying to teach a child to respect authority, yeah. to obey authority. And so first, when the child grows up, they don't question authority. Um, and I feel, for the most part, I think that's why it's sometimes difficult for a lot of people to, to understand, to question government, because mm -hmm. lest they be, you know, shunned or... Um, punished by their peers for yeah. questioning, you know. Um, so that's really it. I guess uh, just trying to universalize the principle. You can't just be against state violence, but the violence we do to each other is okay, right? Mm -hmm. You have to universalize it and also extend it to children. Um, and so, with that, we're part of a non political organization, so there's no politics yeah. involved. There's no Republican, <laughs> Democrat. It's like, oh, I don't even deal yeah. with that. So. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, I feel bad by saying I don't vote, but a no, lot no. of times I just get so frustrated because I feel like. They're, it's all one big game to them. It is. And, you know, if, you know, you have one side who wants to take over everything, or you have one side that says that, um, well, for, you know, women, it's like, you, you know, you're not actually a person, you know, and just a lot of those things really get, fr you know, I get frustrated with. Yeah. I don't like being treated like less. So, and so, so I think a lot yeah. of what, what we're, we're doing is like creating like very critical and creative solutions to the problems we face. And, and, and no means that someone say that you are any subhuman. Um, that's stupid. Like it's just yeah. a stupid argument. But um, I don't know. For, for me, it was just um, you when you do free people up or wake them up yeah. to, the, to the state, there are like more active ways in which they can access the environment so in a lot of ways like my term paper was actually on um, Beowulf instead of him being the hero why doesn't he start raising other heroes to take his place not just have an heir like just genuinely have everyone else yeah. around him be as awesome which is a good point if he had done that he probably wouldn't have died if he well, either, yeah, he would have yeah, been yeah, yeah, well, yeah. And then it was just the fact that, you know, just putting all your hope in one monopoly, and that's one of the things with monopolies is that the prices always go up and the services always go down because yeah. we're the only game in town. Um, but I don't know. It's, there's just a lot to it. And I think for the most part, I think we're just, we speak originally. And that's what I, because I, I run into so many cliche, same old, same old. Like you've talked to thousands of people throughout your life and how many times do you hear something good or original or something you can agree with but 
Then again, everyone has their own agenda, right? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. So that's uh, pretty much size up. I'm glad you don't vote. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, so objectively, that's all it is. They're advocating for a stranger to force his preference onto everyone into a geographic region. I mean, essentially, that is my vote by not voting. Exactly, it's yeah. It's by saying, I, I don't like anyone. I don't consent, right? Yeah. I'm, and by voting, you give complicit consent yeah. to the political system. Um, so, you know, you're, you're to blame for all the problems, right? You, you have no uh, qualms to, no uh, qualms to, I guess, complain about it, right? You yeah. voted, you participated, you gave complicit accent. Which I, I get actually really frustrated when people do get mad at me when I say I didn't vote. And I'm like, but I didn't like either one. Why am I right. going to put either one in power Evil is then? still evil. <laughs> and, and like, how misconstrued is the system when it does fail? Like, who are you, you're going to blame everyone now? Like, yeah. no, like, no one person is responsible. We all just got to buckle down if it yeah. does get, get deep. It is a form of apathy though. And that's again, as you look at it as a matrix. So, you know, people do want to create change. So how do you control that um, that, that need to create change? So you create this thing called voting in which you participate only every four years, only by spending a couple of hours looking for parking, waiting in line, and then you go in your confession booth behind a curtain where no one can see you, and then you pull a chat, push that chat. Not to forget that along the way, everyone's like, vote such and such, vote such and such, because right. I'm going to sway you at the last minute. Right. So. Actually, yeah. that's illegal at the polls. But and, 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 stand and outside. You have a lot of the older generations like, well, you have to vote the right person. It's like, look, you've had a lifetime yeah. to vote the right person in. I don't want to die a slave. I don't want to keep voting a sign. I don't want my children to have social security prison tattoo numbers on their feet that they'll never have, you know? You'll never, that's another forced service too, social security, right? Yeah. You never gave consent. You never said, gave a contract. It's like, I'm okay with this. Look, you weren't even born then, but still you're forced to pay for it. And when it's time for you to retire, you'll never have it. Yeah. Right? A lot more unfunded liabilities. And I don't think you're ever going to have a utilitarian system where like the good of everybody is the good of everybody. Someone's always going to be losing that well, transaction. Already, they tried that in uh, Russia. That didn't work out too yeah. well. Yeah. Which, I, it's actually kind of sad it didn't. Um, I did take a um, Russian film class and um, it was very sad to see that they were actually trying so hard to make it work, but then you did get those few people who had power and they just broke it essentially. Yeah. Since you're familiar yeah. with the text, what do you think of medieval Iceland? Um, what do you, um, which text would this be? Because I, had, I didn't get to take uh, that class. I was so You didn't? No. Okay, well, never mind then. Well, actually, we have an uh, email yeah, sign up for a newsletter. I'll make a note to send you some actually cool stuff for uh, medieval Iceland. Okay. So there's like one example in the past where, oh, would you like to explain it? You've done a lot more reading. Yeah, here. yeah, all right. Um, so this is like 19, 900, you know. Which author is 80. this? Um, um, it's not Lee Erickson. No. no. It's got, it's just old. It's really old actually. It's from the Icelandic sagas is what you're talking about. Yes, right? yes I am. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's Herc on this tale, it's like, spelled retarded <laughs> and like this was what I read right after Beowulf but um, anyways you have an Antarctic system where everyone's homesteading you're still trying to colonize Iceland and if you were to commit acts of violence you're held responsible to the individual and his family for repentance like if you killed someone it's your job to now provide their amount of labor or their amount mm -hmm. of subsistence um, although that's kind of implied in the society that you would do that if you yeah. don't people will take you to an all thing, which is the entire community meets up and they decide whether or not to outlaw you. And in the process of outlawry, you do get separated from all your assets and you get sent to take a hike. Um, so that was kind of the way Icelandic anarchic culture, it wasn't really anarchy because you still had one community that would come together at the all thing. Yeah, because I remember with, um, I'm pretty sure I remember anyway, they had um, multiple chiefs and then they all would come to meet together, I think, um, once a year. I think it's it pretty much one government official that they had, but that one exception to violence of that government official eventually is what gave way for the whole thing to collapse, because eventually you were able to bribe that official. Um, but yeah, but that's how they worked. Uh, and so violence was very, very low, very mitigated, because I think if I, like sometimes the camps would do battle, but they try to make sure that they didn't kill the other person. Yeah. The fightings were fascinating people. A lot of people just saw them as brute violence, right. but they were, I mean, you look at their god Odin, he sacrificed his eye for knowledge. Yeah. And I just, you know, I think that's a very profound thing that they valued bards and language and stuff like that rather than just battle prowess. Right. They saw it as something together. I like that, I guess, kind of like uh, samurai culture afterwards. Mm. Uh, they became more interested in poetry and, and uh, writing. And, and, and you notice that some of the freest societies actually started out of the rejection of an original state. Like, here we are rejecting England. Yeah. They were rejecting... Um, France? No. no. They were um, Norwegian. 
So they were rejecting the hierarchy in Norway. And then it took them like 500 years to build up their own hierarchy. And then now, I don't know, who kicked out the, um, the global banksters? Like, I, who actually freed up all their, like, you know about the globalist Ponzi system? That's, and so like, pretty much every country all over the world is in massive debt. But every country still feels the obligation to pay it. Whereas I think it was Iceland that just kicked out all the bankers from every oh, yeah, foreign country that. and said, no, like if we have a national debt, it's nationalized, therefore it's our debt. So they got all the foreigners out. They, I think they arrested them even. And they were like, if you're outside of our country trying to loan us money, you're going to jail now because that's a Ponzi scheme. And there's a whole, I, I'm off topic. No, that's no, no, way no. off topic. I, it relates again. No, I like Iceland. I visited there um, really? for the summer for nice. a, uh, what was it, 12 hour layover? <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> but, um, I was just very surprised how um, in the airport, you know how it's usually a whole rush and anger and everything and um, no? You haven't been to Dallas? <laughs> no, I, I mean, not the RIC. Not here. What's the Richmond Dallas, International Dallas Airport? Yeah, yeah. 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 don't go to it Dallas. Is? It's, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's just very frustrated. But, um, Sorry. In, it's a silent airport and um, so they don't have announcements and everyone's just very willing to try to help you. And, I thought this, you know, spoke a lot about the people. The fact that you have these um, folk that are, you know, doing their work and stuff, and they're still like cheerful. Yeah, yeah, that is true. I didn't ever notice that. I guess my only experience with Airpods mostly just been Dallas, so yeah. I kind of assume it's always been silent. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess it would be kind of busy and active hub at other airports. Is it true they say about the, uh, the Icelandic forest? I didn't get to see it. You didn't? All right. I was stuck in the airport because um, it was a layover flight. Sorry. So you didn't actually go there. <laughs> Oh, I was just in the yeah, Well, airport. so <laughs> the, the, the thing about if you ever get lost in Icelandic forest, just stand up because the trees only grow like so high. <laughs> it was hard to tell from the air, but that actually, I was wondering what that was. Yeah, and um, there's actually a really big controversy over driftwood because it is hard to like have resources in that area. Mm -hmm. So if I have a piece of wood on my property and it goes down the stream, at what point in that stream does it become your property? And like we can handle these torts, we can handle proper, private property between each other. We don't need an almighty state who's extorting both of us the entire time telling us you know which way it should go it's like chopping the baby in half and then saying oh you have the whole baby now and it's like no but I, you still took you still took yeah. away it yeah Gover governments in itself uh, violate property rights because again oh look at wills um my family we got completely i don't want to say gypped because that sounds really bad but um because it wasn't officially done they um cut us out of the will so. the state really mm -hmm. so you had your own consensual contract uh, which are within your own will. Yeah, and um, he, you know, signed it and everything, but because it wasn't properly notarized, they... Um, because the state didn't acknowledge yep. it. And there's, like, so many people on the inside now trying to, like, get to the inheritance mm -hmm. because when you don't have, like, claims on inheritance, um, you have so many people outside that can step in and make a lot of money off just working out the estate. Yeah. So that's horrible. Like, I, I remember my grandpa, he was so... He was like, it's the fastest way to make money in real estate, which is taking foreclosed homes that either they're not even foreclosed, they just, they're inheritance that people Yeah, that's how my great-grandfather made his fortune uh, after the Great Depression. He uh, just bought everything out, he used to keep, you know, money in the mattress, money in the floorboards. He knew how to stockpile, that's yeah. all I gotta say, but um, never trusted anyone. Right. <laughs> that's that kind of guy, and I think that's how he did <laughs> do so well. But. I guess you can't really do that today anymore. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Every, every dollar, so now it's like lost over 97% of his value. Because again, mon uh, currency has been monopolized. So now every dollar you do hide underneath yeah. the mattress is depreciating in value. Um, there's, so that, that hurts the poor the worst. No one seems to have to save. Um, keeps them trapped already in well, a tight Well, they have to save in yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, like, did you hear what happened in Cyprus? Uh, so their government solution in saving off like some of the debt and some of the problems they were incurring economically was to steal about 50% of everyone's hey, savings. Hey, it's not stealing. It's called tax on oh, yeah. deposits. Right, right, yeah. Tax on deposits. What? They call yeah. it something else. How'd it they is. pass that one? <laughs> They just <laughs> did it. The they just yeah. did it. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so this like wiped off 50% off, yeah. this straight clean off everyone's savings. And everyone's like running to their bank and trying yeah. to withdraw, yeah. but it's already too late. Uh, but now there's digital currency. Have you heard of Bitcoin? No. No? Really? Um, I guess it's... Uh, I know, I know, so it's interesting. So like there's interesting currencies out there, like even Wow has their own currency. Yeah. And I know a lot of people pay a lot of money sometimes for currency you can find uh, like online like that. Um, which I think is ridiculous, yeah. but... <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But so, so because there's a, a value for this, a demand for it, the same thing is going, going on for this digital currency called Bitcoin. Uh, so it's, uh, whereas the government uh, monopoly on currency continues to inflate only because they can print on as much as they want, there's no scarcity, there's no real value, you can print it on as monopoly money. Uh, there's this new form of currency called uh, Bitcoin in which uh, they do have a form of scarcity in which there's only so much Bitcoin that can be mined. Uh, it's a produce per year. Yeah. Uh, and now, like, Reddit is starting to use it, WordPress is using it, there's a Subway. Yes! No, I'm not sure if that's frustrating or not. <laughs> uh, well, Subway in Russia is starting to use it. Yeah, um, I have on my phone. Now, now it's a lot easier to trade, so there's an but, uh, app to scan a QR code no, and then so uh, trade bitcoins. Um, government can restrict it. They try to, they can't re regulate it because uh, they can't even tax it because it's, it's an open source. Yeah, it's yeah. digital. Um, How do you tax something that doesn't technically exist? Right. New York is probably thinking about uh, trying to give businesses licenses to trade in bitcoin, but the thing is it's anonymous. It kind of reminds me actually of um, Merton. He's a uh, nature writer and um, he, his one essay, the, uh, the rhinoceros in... What was it called? The rain and the rhinoceros, there we go. It was, um, he starts off the essay say, about how much he enjoys the rain, but he doesn't know how long it's going to last before the government um, monopolizes it and takes control of it. And, um, I don't know, that's just... They have, they have in many, uh, in many states where it's illegal to collect rainwater. I don't know. It's a natural resource, though. I know. <laughs> the government will find a way. That's like saying that I can't like go pick my grass or whatever. Actually, yeah. Uh, in, in the state of Maryland, they have uh, they use these satellite systems to measure the amount of rainfall that falls on your property, and they tax you on that now. Um, well, Maryland's messed up anyway. We don't talk about that. <laughs> uh, well, so, so that's how they are. So they, they a lot of there's one guy who collected a lot of rainfall and, and created his own lake. Uh, I think maybe he had a farm or something like that. To use it for yeah. uh, government agents. They always send the Joni no, administrators. Like, Sorry, that's not up to code. Sorry, that's not for our standard regulation. You're just a stranger. Who are you? It, the code actually. Um, I get very frustrated when governments come in with their codes and stuff. Like some of them, I like. You know, saying that buildings can't be a certain height because that does preserve, I think, a landscape. Yeah. But there's um, like there's a kennel, for instance, where someone takes in a whole bunch of pit bulls that have been abandoned and stuff like that. And um, her cage weren't too cold because they were too. Too big. Two weeks and then just too big. <laughs> yes, I mean, she's got you know large property and everything else, but she ended up um, getting kicked off of this property because they weren't the code, even though they were the be they were better cages than they had in the kennels um, for like the SBCA and everything else. Right. And, and I just think that's you know you, here you have a, you see this a lot. I feel like with people trying to do good and you know somehow there's something they do wrong that isn't even really wrong and, right. and, and that stops it. So you, you hit like a really interesting nail then, another aspect of the matrix. <laughs> yeah. uh, so essentially really it's a stranger is telling you what you can and cannot do with your property. Like here in Richmond you have the Architectural Commission that. Board in which like you have a, a, a property that they think is like a historic home. So if you try to change anything into your property, they'll fine you. Yeah. First you don't pay that fine, you go to another cage. There's uh, a woman <laughs> uh, nearby in Petersburg <laughs> who had these uh, couple of donkeys. Never had any problem for years. Years, years, no problem. Uh, but now uh, the city code official came in and was like, sorry, uh, it's not in our books that you can have donkeys. Yeah. It's like, well, I've had this for years, never yeah. had any problems Makes with it. Makes me wonder, there's a um, ostrich near the train tracks in Richmond. I wonder if that's the code. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. It confused me yeah. when I saw that. <laughs> These are all different forms of uh, extortion attempts. Um, again, government like Detroit has filed for bankruptcy. Oh, uh, that's such a sad place. Um, I don't know if you saw the um, Andrew Zimmer um, special on it. Andrew Zimmer? No. Yeah. Um, it was very, he was talking, he was showing all the abandoned buildings and um, how they have people living in them now and because they don't have to pay taxes then. Right. So, but um, I think it's sad that once the business, you know, grew out of there, just you have all this depression and no yeah. one's trying to help. Uh, yeah, and that's, uh, that's what happens when the government gets control of any kind of community, uh, the unfunded liabilities, eventually, they, that, that's what happened with them, there wasn't enough wealth to keep stealing, and everyone's like, well, like, you're stealing too much money, so I'm just going to move away. So a lot of the good businesses disappeared, and the whole, the, uh, the whole system started to collapse. Um, but right now, outside of that, though, there's a lot of interesting opportunities coming out of Detroit. Uh, so you find like it t takes over like an hour for the police to respond to 911 calls. Over an hour. So this guy created his own security private business called uh, Viper Threat Management System. He's providing these, uh, this service for these neighborhoods. 
and, and crime rates have dropped down dramatically. Oh, wow. No one's ever had to been shot. No one's been killed. Uh, he provides real escort services. He provides real protective security for for these homes. Um, again, people are volunteering. Almost reminds me of um, the Templars. The Templars when they first started. Their whole business wasn't necessarily to be holy warriors initially. It was to uh, give passage to pilgrimages. Uh, okay, okay, like uh, to protect from bandits. And escort whatnot. services. I think I have that history right. I don't yeah. know, you guys are looking. Oh, uh, no, no, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, I don't cool. have my textbook out. It was like, only a matter of time yeah. before they actually started like oh, yeah. well, raiding them and, sorry, and like making it seem that. Well, once you had the um, Pope or what? No, it's not Pope. Earth. Was Pope Earth was that? <laughs> I don't remember. It was as soon as they were starting out, really. They just woke. It was. It was really bad because. God wills it. <laughs> you already have like a feudalistic system where everyone's out to get their own, and then you have so it's a centralized power. Like right now, I have Shakespeare in like ten minutes, and oh, we're reading. <laughs> you do? I love Shakespeare. We're reading uh, Henry the Fifth, and I'm like, fuck that dude! Like straight up, like like fuck that dude! How many people did he get killed for no reason? For no reason. He invades a country and he gets to walk out of it the whole time I'm watching yeah. like you saw you know what I'm talking about go he just yeah. walks away well I lost my army in France I killed oh, as many Frenchmen shit. as I could they killed all like all, all everyone who followed me died I killed oh, all these people right. they, you know they were peasants it doesn't matter yeah. <laughs> it matters a lot and no one no one man should have that much influence oh, no. but that's that's oh. so I'm gonna yeah, go yeah, and yeah, take yeah. that status class now yeah, I have to head to historical He's a archaeology hero. here in a minute. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, my name nice is Cal. Angelica. Angelica. Mm -hmm. Pleasure to meet you. This is my friend Derek. Hello. Hello. And, 